Welcome to A Bit About Augmented Reality in Education. The 2010 Horizon Report, a joint report by the Media Consortium and Educause, predicts that the use of simple augmented reality in education will be widespread within the next two to three years. The Horizon Report critiques and describes emerging technologies likely to have a large impact on teaching, learning, or creative inquiry on college and university campuses. All of the emerging trends in this year's report have a relationship to augmented reality, electronic books, mobile learning, open content, gesture-based computing, and visual data analysis. What is augmented reality? According to Ronald Azuma's 1997 definition, augmented reality is an environment that includes both virtual reality and real-world elements. For instance, an AR user might wear translucent goggles. Through these, he could see the real world as well as computer-generated images projected on top of that world. Another definition by Milgram sees augmented reality as a continuum. On one side, we have reality, and on the other, virtual reality. In between, what we have is mixed reality or augmented realities. On the left is the real-world Sistine Chapel. On the right, we see Second Life's virtual reality version of the chapel. In Second Life, you can fly up, view different parts, click on parts for more information. Virtual reality becomes a part of our own experience. I haven't been to the Sistine Chapel, but I have been to Second Life's version several times. If you'd never been to the Sistine Chapel and were like me and had visited Second Life's version, you might have felt the same way as I did when I watched the movie Angels and Demons. As I saw the scene with the Sistine Chapel, I suddenly felt like I'd been there before. I later read that the producers had actually recreated the Sistine Chapel for the movie. We are used to having parts of our world augmented. Today there are many examples of AR in marketing and entertainment. Adidas has an augmented reality running shoot. John Mayer has the first augmented reality video with Heartbreak Warfare. James Cameron used a special augmented reality camera to film live and virtual. Hollywood blockbusters like District 9, Star Trek Enterprise, and the just-released Iron Man 2 all have augmented reality promotions. There's even an augmented reality matzah produced for Passover. You can try on clothes, glasses, or see how your living room would look in different colors. And GM is working on an AR windshield that adds information about what's ahead on the road. You can find the nearest bar that sells Stella Artois, and with your AR app for your smartphone, if you see a house for sale, soon you'll be able to point your camera to it and have a peek inside. Take a minute to view this YouTube video by Rocket Boom that gives you a brief overview of augmented reality. Engineer Thomas Cordell coined the phrase augmented reality in 1992 while working at Boeing to describe a novel concept. Instead of bringing a user into a virtual world, AR brings a virtual world to the user, ultimately to enhance perception. Cordell proposed that such a system could aid engineers in repair technicians, and the following year, he and his colleagues gave a presentation on environment displays at the 1993 Virtual Reality Annual International. The concept was well received, but much of the technology necessary to create augmented reality was just not cost effective to bring to market. Advances in recent years, however, are making it much more plausible. Primarily, cheap enough processors, fast enough online connections, and the widespread adoption of affordable digital cameras to provide a visual input. Today, nearest to from across air is an iPhone app designed specifically for displaying information about the London Underground. Layer is being called the world's first augmented reality browser, running on Android and iPhone. Bionic Eye for the iPhone will direct you to the nearest Starbucks. Tops is using it to sell baseball cards. GE's plug into the Smart Grid ad campaign makes it possible for anyone with a webcam to try out augmented reality on a small Dassault Systems is working on giving an AR touch to the old games on the backs of cereal boxes. Liverpool-based artist Chris O'Shea recently built an AR billboard. And Professor Babic A. Parviz is working on developing contact lenses that could act as AR displays, which leads where all roads come to an end, Star Trek. If ever there was a nice visual representation of what can be done with augmented reality, it's the holodeck on Star Trek, where users engage with computers to live in a world of fantasy and dreams. One of the first times you might have noticed a very simple augmented reality might have been while watching football on television. The first downline on the football broadcast, it's not really there. We've also seen virtual billboards and sporting events. So these are two ways that AR is used, one to add information and another to make money through sponsorship.
Another term related to augmented reality is gesture-based computing. You might not think you know this term, but you probably do. Today, many families have a gesture-based game in their homes. One example is the Wii. Gesture-based recognition in AR enables humans to interact with mechanical devices using simple, natural gestures. It won't be long before your kids have their own virtual iPad and your games will be controllerless. Two other terms important to augmented reality are geotagging and geolocation. A geotag is a GPS coordinate that associates content such as videos, textual information, audio, or any user-generated content to a specific location. Augmented reality applications draw on specific tags created by companies, but will also depend on the content that everyday users add through geotagging. Today's camera allows you to tag the location of your photos. Pictures placed on sites like Flickr can tag geolocation. YouTube video can also be geotagged. Google Maps have businesses located by geotags. Augmented reality can be triggered by marker or markerless technology. Markers include codes like QR codes and semicodes. These markers can trigger things like text, sound, and visuals. The two shown here are different types of codes, but they both trigger the same event. What brings augmented reality today to the everyday user is the use of smart devices. Augmented reality browsers like Layer and Wikitude layer your real-world view through your camera lens. Using the camera, compass, and GPS, the browser first locates the user. Next, it retrieves information from online sources about those coordinates and then overlays that information on the camera view of your phone. Both Wikitude and Layer are free. Why should we use AR in education? First of all, it provides a rich contextual learning environment for an individual learning a skill. It appeals to constructivist notions of education where students take control of their own learning. It provides an opportunity for authentic learning and also appeals to multiple learning styles. It has the power to engage a learner in ways that have never been possible before. Each student can have his or her own unique discovery path. In training, there are no real consequences if mistakes are made. Of course, there are criticisms of augmented reality. Some people say it's just another gimmick. There's also technological issues. Sometimes you have to download software. There's also inaccurate information that comes from the compass and GPS on your smartphone. And there's also the potential for cognitive overload. How much can one person take in at a time? Will everybody have the technology or will it create a larger digital divide? And what about the loss of privacy? The Horizon Report splits educational applications into four areas. Skills training, discovery-based learning, modeling objects, and AR books. Today we have several uses of AR skills training. The military is using AR to train mechanics and to train troops through AR games. Firefighters are using AR to fight fires. Surgeons are learning procedures for the use of augmented reality applications. Take a look at this video on this page to see BMW's view of training in future. Augmented reality provides a rich environment for discovery-based learning. Today, visitors to historic sites can access an AR app and find out information about the location. For example, how it looked at a certain point in history. If you have an Android phone, you can point it to the sky and use Google Sky Maps, and it'll tell you what star you're looking at. Want to take a tour of a college or university? U-Tour X will take you on that virtual tour. 
And if you're actually on the location, you can point your phone to certain buildings and get information about them. In 2006, Karen Schreier created a game called Reliving the Revolution. It takes place in the Battle of Lexington. Using GPS location, players are assigned various roles and sides in the battle to understand what happened there. They interact with various virtual characters. This is, this is work that is being done at MIT and the Education Arcade. As you know, global warming has greatly changed the world as we know it. You're here to help us improve our world. At the time lab, we go back and make small changes in the past. For this mission, a few carefully chosen laws will be placed on the ballot in Cambridge, Massachusetts, way back in the 21st century. and AR model creation and manipulation make it possible to allow users to envision how a given item will look in different settings. Models are generated rapidly, manipulated, and rotated. Students get information immediately about their designs in a way that allows them to spot inconsistencies. In architecture, we can see scalable models. An AR book looks like any other book. However, when you place it in front of a webcam, 3D elements, movies, and sound appear. Some of these elements can be interactive. Some of these require the user to download software so that the code embedded in the book can be read. Traditional publishing meets the groundbreaking multimedia technology of augmented reality. You can bring the future to life by using the latest technology. AR is live video imagery, which is digitally processed and augmented by the addition of interactive 3D graphic objects. This feature shows a fully 3D animated avatar sequence, which introduces the living book and the future is wild project. You can view the scenario from different perspectives. Zoom in and out is wild. How can we make simple augmented reality? One way to create a very simple augmentation is with a QR code. QR codes have been used for a while in Japan and Europe. They are just starting to become popular here. United Airlines is using QR codes to let users download their e-tickets to their phone to use at the departure gate, and Starbucks is piloting a QR-enabled app to allow customers to pay. To create a very simple QR code, first of all, download a QR code reader. If you have an iPhone, try NeoReader. If you have a BlackBerry, try VTag. Once you have it downloaded, access the QR application and point your smartphone to any code to see what information is triggered. Okay, now that you've downloaded a code reader, it's time to create a code. To create a simple QR code, go to Kiowa Reader, http colon slash slash QR code dot K-A-Y W-A dot com. Once you are there, choose between URL, text, phone, or SMS. Put in the information, 
and simply click Generate, and there you have your QR code. Now, take out your smartphone, access your code reader, and test to see that it works. You've just created a very simple augmented reality application. Thank you for viewing this presentation on augmented reality in education. For more information, please see my wiki.